places we got to visit in Beijing was the Ming tombs and the Sacred Way. The Sacred Way is the big pathway that leads up to the Ming tombs, which actually houses 13 emperors. Now, this Sacred Way is believed to be the pathway for the deceased emperor to make his way to heaven. So standing as a guard of honour are 12 larger-than-life statues uh, in human form and also 24 animals. Uh, animals are in pairs, two standing and two sitting. This particular sacred way in Beijing is believed to be one of the best preserved and complete in the whole of China. And um, it starts with a huge stone memorial archway which was constructed way back in 1540. Xi'an is one of the best preserved city walls in the whole of China and it would be fair to say that Scotty and I were very impressed and can now consider it to be one of the highlights of our tours in China. It was so impressive to see when we arrived there. It was built way back in the 14th century and it took almost four years to build. It has actually gone through three different restoration periods over the centuries, usually spaced at around 200 years apart, and the latest restoration being in 1983. Once we climbed the stairs to the top of the wall, we were given the option to go for a walk along the top of the wall or to hire a bicycle and go for a half hour cycle ride. Now of course Scotty and I jumped at this chance because we haven't been on the bikes for a while and there was us and another couple from the group donned our bicycles and we spent a really pleasant half hour cycling around the top of the wall. This also gave us a really good view of the ancient city below. Well recommended if you ever get the opportunity to do it, hop on your bike. so impressive is just the sheer size of the wall which must have been a huge building feat for them back in the day. It stands over 12 metres high and it is about between 12 and 14 metres wide at the top and 15 to 18 metres thick at the bottom so pretty in impenetrable to the, the enemy of the time. It has a deep moat surrounding it and it's really pretty and picturesque and we were lucky enough to have a clear blue day, although it was still really cold. The small wild goose pagoda was another stop that we made while we were in Xi'an. It was built in 684 AD and it was certainly built in a style that we've never really seen before throughout our travels in Asia or Southeast Asia. It originally had 15 tiers, but due to Mother Nature, uh, storms and terrible earthquakes, it lost the top two tiers. A big earthquake happened back in 1550 and it caused a huge crack right up the centre of the pagoda. And a hundred years later another earthquake happened and the, the crack closed back up. How about that? Got to be heard in New Zealand. Yeah. Give it a good whack right. all the way to New Zealand. Whoa. <laughs> I was impressed with your donger. <laughs> We 
definitely shared lots of laughs with our small tour party. We were a mixture of Australians, Americans, Lebanese and Indians, but certainly made for some great memories. So we said goodbye to our tour group last night and we are on our own today in Shanghai. Not sure whether you can, that's the view from our hotel room. A bit of a uh, grey day, I think the sun might shine through but it doesn't really matter today because we are on our way to uh, the Shanghai railway station. There are two stations in Shanghai can't pronounce the name of the one that we are going to um, but our tickets are all booked which we did through our tour company and just as well because it is the start of the spring break and um, apparently the train stations and airports and things are a little bit chaotic as people try to travel home for the um, Chinese New Year. The government gives everybody um, a one week holiday for the spring break Chinese New Year apart from if you're working in the hospitality industry or places that stay open all the time so we have been warned that the train station could be quite chaotic and to allow extra time. So we are leaving the hotel at 9 o'clock to catch a taxi to the train station and then to get through security. It's very much like flying international, just about going through security and luggage checks. Security is very high everywhere where we've travelled you have to have your passport with you at all times so hopefully we've allowed enough time we've um, trip advised the station and it appears that there are sign there is signage in English which is the our main concern because hardly anybody will speak English around here so that's the challenge when you are traveling independently in China so hopefully it all goes well and we don't end up somewhere where we shouldn't be. So, fingers crossed. We've made it to the Shanghai Railway Station. Ah! Not sure where we're going, but we'll give it a go. I'm trying to guess we just follow the crowd. Look at the police. Yeah. With the Supposedly with rubber bullets or wooden bullets. So we passed security. Yep. Luckily, straight through. Uh, we just now basically have to wait. Now, can you, Shanghai. Hoi Kwai, Hoi Kwai station. station, not the main, not Shanghai Railway Station, but Shanghai Hoi Kwai Station. Um, Hong Kwai. Yeah. Hong Kwai. So our travel agent booked our tickets for us and had them waiting at our next hotel, which was brilliant. So apparently there is 150 ticket stations alone, counters where you can go to to purchase your tickets. We didn't want that hassle. And we're not um, even too sure what we're yeah, down there. We don't know, not That's too sure. It was just easy to go through an agent, have them arrive, and that was it. So um, thankfully, most of the signage, the digital board, um, so far we have found to be in English. So that was our, our biggest concern because when we flew out of Xi'an yesterday, um, I think it would be challenging to be doing it on your own because nothing was in English at all. Even the check-in counters, like there would be no way we would know where to go, which check-in check oh, counter no. to go to. So it would be a real challenge if you were just traveling um, solo. Yeah, so you'd have to do your research on that one to make sure. Yeah. We'll try and find somebody that speaks English. Yeah. So we've just got some time to fill in now because we were told to be here really early, which we are. Mm. So it's only 10 past 10 and our train doesn't depart until 12.50. Yeah. Um, but we're not too sure what procedures we need to go through to get to where we depart from. So, so to be earlier, we're safer. 
No panic. No panic. <laughs> We've made it to the gate, or what we think is the gate. 94.50 is our train, and uh, we're just in the queue waiting to board. Did you get it? I got it as it was going past. I would love to have got it as it was starting. 